last episode, the Hellcat got a lower pulley and a custom stainless exhaust. This episode, we'll install an upper pulley onto the supercharger and then blow it up. For those that are new here, this engine came out of a burnt Dodge Charger, and it seems like the fire took out part of the stock pulley, and now this thing rattles more than the rest of the Jeep. I'm gonna get it lifted up on its edge, and then do the pulley swap, and then put it all back together, and then I have to fix a leak at the back of the engine, and that requires me to remove this. So now we move on to the front of the engine. That was easy, maybe. A little too easy. Come on. It's wiggling now. Get it off! Come on! Come off, please! Come on! Oy. Wow! Boy oh boy, was that exciting. Next step was to remove the burnt pulley, and I read online that this can become a real headache if you don't have a big enough impact, and, well, you'll see. There's no way this can go wrong, right? I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm gonna break something, and it's going to suck. It was already in a car fire, so I'm really not hurting anything. How about some Makita cordless impact? Should have gotten a half inch. I feel like I'm gonna break the case. I think I'm just gonna unbolt this from the case itself and deal with it that way. Okay, that did not work at all. <laughs> how, how am I gonna do this, dude? I cannot get a good handle on it. Ah, <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's my full body weight. Whoa, oh man. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Clearly the tool provided in the kit was too short and I finally wised up and welded a nut to it for more leverage. Okay, so I welded a nut onto the Metco tool so that I can put a 7 8 wrench on it. I don't know why they didn't do this, but I did, so hopefully it pays off. Oh, what the freak? Let's go, baby! Nah, that was way easier after welding the dot on. I thought this was gonna take me another day, so I'm happy it, it, it won't. So this is the thing that was wobbling around, making a bunch of chatter. You can see in there, the bearing has totally been toasted. This is from the fire, it's not because I was running it incorrectly or anything. We're gonna apply some Loctite and get this hub on. <laughs> Boom, that's it. Let's get this on. Let's get it on straight. All right, let's see if I can assemble this without goofing up the gasket any more than I already have. Okay, yep. That's kind of it, I guess. Unfortunately, I didn't get any clips with the new pulley before disaster struck. As I was driving, I heard an off-key pitch from the supercharger that sounded like this. I pulled off the road immediately, and as soon as I pushed in the clutch, the engine died. Luckily, I was able to make it home by removing the supercharger belt and locking the bypass valve open. Alright, so the supercharger is locked up. Let's pop the lid and see the extent of the damage. Moment of truth. Ah, yeah, it's done for. Boom. That used to not be like that. Chunks of it missing. 
Okay, I blew my supercharger. What went wrong? After giving it some thought, I believe my intake temps were just too high. I thought that by having no hood on the Jeep meant that it was going to be sucking the cool air out. However, I believe that it was actually just sucking air from the radiator. When it blew, I had been driving for maybe 30 minutes, just putting along at maybe 1800 RPM, going 50 miles an hour, chilling, straight chilling. I did not think that would be enough to blow it. I think the biggest failure though, is that I just didn't have a working intake temperature sensor. I've known this Holly computer has been having issues with coolant temperature and manifold air temperature sensor for a couple weeks now. I just didn't think I was gonna push it enough to blow the supercharger. Used red eye superchargers like this one are hard to come by and they go for about five grand. So instead of paying $1,000 for a new computer and getting a working mat sensor that would have told me that this thing's gonna blow up, has cost me a lot of money. Thankfully, I found a stellar deal and I was able to get a compressor section for about half that price. Now before I do anything with this new supercharger, I've already relocated the intake, I've gotta come up with some sort of bypass system for the supercharger, and I've gotta calibrate the mat sensor. Once I complete those things, I think we'll be good to rip. I don't think it's gonna blow again. Sometimes, not knowing what you're doing and being a dummy will catch up to you. And I've blown engines, transmissions, and you know, now add a supercharger to the list. And the computer. Learn from my mistake. Don't be an idiot like me. It's a beaut. All right, I just loaded up my config and I'm getting a coolant temperature reading that is accurate. So I guess this computer is broken. Maybe I can use it for a different project where the coolant temperature doesn't really matter. I couldn't find any data to calibrate the intake temperature sensor, so I set up this test rig to get some data points, varying the temperature using a heat gun. All right, so I wrote down the temperatures I was reading on the Holly, and then I converted that to the ohms just by using the dummy base calibration that I set up. And then I plotted that into Desmos and solved for a function that looks like this using a piece of JavaScript code. And actually it turned out really well. You can see everything is within just a few degrees. The greatest error is seven degrees. Using that function, I extrapolated data at temperatures that I couldn't measure with my test setup and entered those data points into the computer. And with this, I now should have calibrated intake temperature readings. Okay, here we've got the lid off the supercharger. Here is the bypass valve. Now, I just want you to imagine with me for a second. We've got the supercharger snout right here, and then the twin screw assembly about right here, and it's forcing compressed air into this lid. And then that air goes down into the intercoolers and into the engine. So you've got compressed air in this lid, but not compressed air within the snout. And this bypass valve is what allows that compressed air to flow back out and become uncompressed. And when you're in low throttle situations, this actually opens up. Now, when you get on the throttle, it'll close so that the air can compress and go into the engine. But for efficiency's sake, we let it bleed out to the snout. So when the supercharger blew, I actually had this shut at all times. Now, I've actually still been driving this Jeep just without the supercharger. And what I mean is that I have this clamped open at all times and I remove the belt from the pulley. So I've essentially been driving around with a naturally aspirated engine. So here's a better look at that bypass valve. It's essentially just a throttle body, except mine burned in a car fire. So this dial controls the throttle. Here it's shut, here it's open, making no boost, making boost. No boost, boost. The way I kept it from moving was using two pieces of metal 
that just kind of pinned it together. Instead of pinning it against this rod, I'm instead going to be using this vacuum actuator. So this vacuum actuator has a spring and a diaphragm in it. Now the spring keeps it extended normally, and when you apply a vacuum here, it'll suck up the diaphragm, which compresses this rod in. So when the engine is pulling vacuum, aka low throttle, this will be compressed. And when you go wide open throttle, it will extend. Right now, it's at about two and an eighth. Let's turn on the engine and see what it subtracts to. Shortened about one and a quarter. Anyways, let's find a way to mount this. So there are actually two ports on this diaphragm. There's a vacuum side and a compressed air side. To test, I'm just using the compressed air side. As you can see, it opens very nicely. The final change I'd like to make is to swap from this no-name intercooler pump to this big beefy Bosch one. I thought this one was gonna flow enough. It does not flow near enough. But this one, on the other hand, I think it'll be much better. And boom, installed. Finally, with all the upgrades done to make sure I don't blow up another blower, it's time to replace the supercharger. There we go, spillage. Oh yeah, oh boy. You see, I thought it had all leaked out before I did this. All right, I plugged up the intercooler, so hopefully it doesn't drip too much. Nice. All right, we got the supercharger on the table. So we need to move the snout over, the intercooler bricks and the intercooler crossover, and then the fuel rails. Okay, it's leaking more, isn't it? So here's the old blower. I want you to pay attention to these lips right here. Look at them, pretty blunt. Now here's the new one, and they are sharp as can be. Ow! It's also got a ported bearing plate. It's a ported blower. That's pretty cool. Should have blown my supercharger a long time ago. Ah. Oh. Nice, it's off. And on to the new supercharger it goes. And we do contact with the plate. Okay, let's take it back off. Okay, so somewhere here it is contacting, so I'm just gonna remove quite a bit. Now the reason my stock one doesn't fit is because it's common to port this entire snout and I'm not that skillful. I've never ported anything. I'm certainly not gonna do it on like a $900 snout. All right, here's the result. Just took a little bit off. I was measuring along the way and I think I've got more than enough out now. It was contacting right here, this branch. So let's try it. Reassembly and installation of the new supercharger went smoothly. Hopefully this one will last longer this time. The last thing to do is test. I've actually been dailying this Jeep for about a month now, including longer drives from Austin to Houston and back. 
it's safe to say the upgrades did their job. Post your predictions on weight and power numbers for this little wrangler, because in the next episode, we'll be getting it dynoed. Thank you for watching.